Hey guys, it's Pastor Rob. Just wanted to come to you once again and share some thoughts that I'm having and hopefully some encouragement for you today as well. Um, I don't know about you, but it seems like with everything going on in the world, there still seems to be this uneasy feeling all around. And um, the, the idea that I, I keep getting, keep coming to mind for me is this idea of unity. That it seems like this, this world that we're in today is anything but unified that we are polarized by our politics, we're polarized by different views, we're polarized by identities that people are, are placing on each other, and it just seems like that there is this disunity throughout the world, and that we are polarized more than ever before. I don't know if you're seeing that, but that's what I'm seeing. And I can't help but think about how this is exactly what God doesn't want. He doesn't want this disunity especially in the church. And so I think we have to, as we look at the church and we look at each other, we have to be conscious of this idea of unity in the church and disunity that is throughout the world. And what I'm cautioning us for today is not to allow the disunity that is all around us, this is the world that is around us, to be something that infiltrates into the church. Because I think that can easily begin to happen. Because remember, we're talking about two different kingdoms, as I've explained before, that we have the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, the right-hand kingdom, and we have the left-hand kingdom, the kingdom of the world. And, and so, you know, ultimately, the kingdom of the world is one that is run by rulers and by presidents and by governments and those kind of things. And those things are always going to fail us. They're always not going to be successful. No matter who it is in office, they're always going to be something that's going to let us down. But then that's not the one that you and I really hang on to. The one we hang on to and the one that we hold up more than more is the, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. And that's where we reside. And that's the important one for us. And sometimes what happens is these two bleed together and we tend to really get in trouble when that starts to happen. And so what I really encourage us to do is to remember that this is a perfect opportunity for us as Christians to exhibit unity and show what unity is all about. That we can be friends, we can be co-workers, we can be co-workers in the gospel, even if we disagree on politics or all kinds of other things, that we rise above that because of what Christ has done for us. And I believe this is really a, a biblical message that we, we really need to exhibit now more than ever in this world, is to really just be one that accepts each other in love, no matter what our views are, no matter how we much we disagree, that really what we are called to is something that's higher than that. And here's what we, I would base this on. This is in Ephesians chapter 4, and I'll read these words to you. It says, I therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. That is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope that belongs to your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. I love that because it's Paul talking about the fact that he is a prisoner of the Lord, and he urges us to walk in a manner a manner that is worthy of our calling and what we have been called to, this, this faith that we have been given, this grace that has been shown to us, and that he says that what we are to do is with all humility and gentleness, with patience, we are to bear with one another in love. So no matter what we disagree about, no matter how much we don't agree with one another, no matter how much someone may offend us, we walk with patience, bearing with one another in love. And he says that we are eager then to maintain unity of the spirit in the bonds of peace. See, that's almost exactly what we don't see in the world today. We are seeing things that are far from peaceful happening in this world. And we as Christians have a great opportunity to show what unity in the spirit is in the bonds of peace. That we are called to one body and one spirit, just as we were called to one hope that belongs to our call, that we are one Lord with one faith as well. That's what we understand, and one baptism. See, what we under, have to understand is through the baptism um, that we were baptized into Christ, but also we were baptized as brothers and sisters in Christ. Therefore, we are baptized into one another. 
And so we are called to this higher unity that is above all the things in this world. And that we are not supposed to, as we hear in Scripture and other places, that we aren't supposed to sort of fall into the patterns of this world or to actually love this world more than anything else. That what we are called to do today is actually live in the kingdom of God and actually represent Jesus in this world. And the way that we do that is show unity above anything else. That we don't get involved in all of this disagreement that's happening, this polarization, and that we actually look to find unity and show unity in the body of Christ. I mean, just imagine what would happen if we as a church body at Our Saviors actually exhibited this sort of otherworldly unity where we show that we are together no matter what, no matter what differences we have, that we are together as brothers and sisters in Christ that love each other because of the faith we've been given, and, and we live it out with a bond of peace. That we show the world what it looks like and how Jesus transforms us to a place where we can have this unity that is above anything else. You know, there's so many things that can get in the way of this. One of the things I see right now, and I know a friend of mine that's a pastor, is in the midst of this right now, is that he is struggling because his church is really not unified because he has some members that are actually very angry that the church has not opened yet. And then we have other members that are very, very much wanting to stay in the place of following the government and the fact that the church needs to stay closed right now. And this is creating a huge, huge problem within his church. Thank God we don't have that here. But what we need to do is no matter where you are on any of these issues, we need to err on the side of unity, err on the side of peace, and show unity as we go forth as the church. I hope that message makes sense for you today in this world that is full of all these polarities. Hopefully we as the church body here can show what unity and love truly looks like. I hope that's beneficial for you today. So let's pray. Dear Lord, we just thank you for today. We thank you for all that you're doing. And Lord, we just want you to know, Lord, that we want to be a unified body. And so Lord, help us through your spirit to do that. Let us lead forth, Lord, and show forth the love of Christ as we live the love of Jesus each and every day. Help us, Lord, to show what true unity is all about. That, Lord, we can be unified and love each other even though we may have differences in opinions. That, Lord, we don't seek to, to polarize ourselves to one extreme or the other, but, Lord, we ho hope to bring peace and sort of camaraderie and brotherhood to each other so that, Lord, we can live together in peace and hope. So, Lord, help us, transform us to put the things of this world sort of to the side and let you reign in us more and more as we represent you and your kingdom. And let that be through a unity that is only something that could happen because of the love of Jesus Christ in us. So Lord, we just pray this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Hey guys, thanks. Take care. I hope you have a good week as well. Just a little thing I want to mention to you as well is that next week I'm going to be taking a week off. I have not had a week off all year. And so I'm going to take next week off. So you probably won't be seeing a video from me next week. Um, and you probably won't be having a Bible study from me. But otherwise, I hope that you have a great week. Take care. God bless.